Hello everyone, this is Seidai Tamura, an artist from the biggest little city in the world, originally from Tokyo, Japan. Welcome back to my channel. This video is not particularly about painting technique per se, but it is related to painting and might be useful information for a lot of professional painters. So once you completed your work and shown it to your prospective clients, and if the client decides to purchase it and pays for it, then it's time to ship the painting. Packing your painting to your client is kind of a bittersweet experience. You're excited and grateful that someone has bought your work, but packing a delicate item such as painting can be tedious. But it is a part of the business and you've got to do it thoroughly and well. If the painting gets damaged because of your poor packaging, not only will your client be disappointed, but the whole deal could come apart. So I typically start by placing a delicate sheet of paper directly over the surface of a painting. I do this to avoid any scratches from coarser packing materials during the transit. Next step is to add a bubble wrap layer, or if I don't have that, I also sometimes use foam sheets. The bubble wrap layer provides pretty good protection from being damaged in shipping, but then I proceed to add another layer using styrofoam. Styrofoam is a great material for packing because number one, it's very light and number two, it's easy to mold into any shape or size you want. As you know, using light and also durable packing material is crucial because the heavier it gets, the more expensive it becomes to ship. One downside I find with styrofoam though is that it creates a tiny crumbly mess I finally wised up to have a vacuum cleaner close by whenever I use this material. The final part of this packing process is to box the whole thing in a rigid and firm cardboard protective layer. I learned this packing technique from an unexpected person that I met at a coffee shop years ago. I used to work at a local coffee shop and I got acquainted with one of the customers who happened to be an auctioneer. I learned that he also did a lot of business selling items on eBay and he had developed a method to do an efficient and cost-effective way to pack his products. So this procedure you just saw is basically from his wisdom. He also taught me to keep an eye out for any discarded materials that could be used for my packaging. This stuff is typically found in the back of business stores or it could be by your neighbor's trash bins. A word of caution that I need to put in here is that don't assume that these materials are discarded or trash. Just because they look like abandoned garbage doesn't mean that they actually are. The owner of it might have left it there temporarily and intended to do something with it later. Always confirm with the owner of that trash that it is okay for you to take it. I kind of got off the topic, but the takeaway from my friend's wisdom is that keeping the cost down for your packing material would boost your bottom line. I try not to charge my client a lot for shipping, but I do need to charge a minimum amount to cover the actual shipping cost and materials to pack the artwork. My goal is to maintain a good balance between my client and my interests. I feel by using recycled materials for packaging, it's mutually beneficial. Packing your artwork is a kind of a boring and mundane part of the business, but it's significant and I don't want to let my guard down and compromise my integrity. I hope the video was helpful for this tiresome but important element of the business. Thanks for watching and have a great day.